Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for joining us today. And our mission here is to inspire and empower you to live your life fully in your sovereignty and power with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health through your personal connection with spirit. So thank you again for taking time to be here out of your busy schedule because I know, you know we all have stuff to do. So to be here to learn, to grow, embrace your fullest potential. And your time is very valuable and precious. And I want to honor you for being here and acknowledge you for choosing this for yourself. So you might want to grab a piece of paper and a pen, get, take some notes, get comfortable, have something to drink, water, tea, whatever works for you. And um, today on the show, we have Benjamin Bernstein here with us, and we're going to be talking about embodied awakening, how to take it deeper. And so what does that mean, right? We're going to talk about Benjamin about all that. We're going to learn a simple, effective technique for embodied awakening, plus a potent technique for walking between the worlds from Andean shamanism. We're going to learn how to make embodied awakening your new normal and discover the extraordinary benefits you'll receive in every part of your life when you keep your awakened state alive every day. So I'm excited. Um, we always have such a wonderful time with Benjamin, really powerful every time he comes on the show. So um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited because it's like I could really use this boost today, to be honest. So please join me in welcoming Benjamin to the show. Benjamin, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again, Laura. I'm so glad you're here because I know that so much has been changing in your life, right? Oh, yeah, all the time. Um, probably most recently, my partner, McKeesla, had a stroke on December 11th. Oh, no. Yeah, and it was her, she, her whole right side went out. No, no use of the right arm or right leg at all. But now, just a little over two months later, she's got full use of the right arm or right leg coming back. Her okay. physical therapist said it was like the fastest stroke recovery she'd ever seen. Oh, wow. Good. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Wow. That's because that can be scary. So yay. So you guys must be doing something right. Well, we are, and we have hundreds of people praying for us, which is the thing we're probably doing most right. Mm -hmm. um, we have a huge support network uh, of people who, you know, love and care for us, and they've just been coming forth. A lot of very powerful, you know, people who are very strong in consciousness praying makes a big difference. Yes, absolutely. Good. Well, we will also include you both in our prayers as well that we do on Sundays, our prayer circle. So we will include you both in our prayers as well for a happy, a healthy, rapid recovery. Okay. So in whatever way it looks for, you, for, for both of you. Um, so today <clears throat> we're talking about, you know, this, you know, uh, uh, embodied awakening. We've talked about embodied awakening before right. um, on previous shows. But I feel like you've been taking it even further and you've gone deeper into it and you've been working with it even more with your membership groups, et cetera. So mm -hmm. can you tell us, you know, for the last, you know, since you were here last time, what has changed in this embodied awakening? Well, um, what's the, probably the most tangible thing is I've done a lot of training since then in Andean shamanism, which is just from the Andes, which is, you know, the high mountains in the region of Peru and that part of the world of South America. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've added now is a, is a technique called the Four Suns exercise, which is, it works very differently. The, the invocation I, I have given in the past for Embodied Awakening is just where you simply ask your higher self to do it for you and it comes in and takes care of it. But this is a technique where you use your own power of visualization and directed will to help make that happen. And this, this kind of puts the embodied awakening on even firmer ground because it literally roots you into the earth, to the very core of the earth. And it also anchors you to the sun in the center of our solar system, as well as the black sun at the center of our galaxy. Mm, awesome. And then there's the sun in your belly, which is the fourth sun referred to in that exercise. And that, that exercise I've done consistently is phenomenal. Um, I mean, what I found is it took my embodied awakening into a much more grounded, solid place that I didn't even know I was missing until I found it. So <laughs> the, the, the invocation still works on its own, but I found that combining it with this other technique just takes it to the next level. Awesome. I love it. And, and that's the thing. It's like we, you know, we love your technique that you were doing before, but if you found something even, you know, that makes it stronger, more powerful, and mm -hmm. also uh, something practical that you can use and actually feel in your body and in your day-to-day -day life, right? For me, yeah. it's, it's all about 
bringing all the esoteric into practical everyday you know uses right to mm -hmm. give you more vitality etc right absolutely and so let's let's talk a little bit for those of for those listeners and watchers who may not know what embodied awakening is because they might not have been on the call before so can you tell us a little bit about that to, to start off the call right well for starters let's just acknowledge that awakening cannot be verbalized at all so mm -hmm. um i love what um i believe adyashanti the great non-dual teacher says something like, okay i'm about to talk about awakening and of course it cannot be described so i know i'm going to fail but i will fail as well as i can <laughs> so, I like that. Spirit, I'll, I'll proceed. What I have found, there are certain basic things that can be understood by the human intellect. First, um, when I say embodied awakening, what I'm specifically referring to is the higher self, which is like one stage up from the human, the, the soul or the, the spirit part that created the human in the first place, divinity one level up, actually comes into your body and merges with you in i mean it, it comes into every cell in your body and it becomes a new blended consciousness that is noticeably different than just being an isolated human so when this uh, embodied awakening happens where the awakening literally comes to you instead of you going out of the body to go to it um there, there's four things that can be said about it um four four qualities of life that noticeably change the first is that in your daily life there's a lot more harmony flow ease and grace secondly everything you're responsible for you do more responsibly and more joyfully mm -hmm. and that's important because a lot of people oh I'm, if i get it all awake i said i'll just space out and won't get anything done this actually increases your productivity and responsibility so it's all good for your 3d stuff the third is that instead of having to figure things out mentally a lot you just more and more know what to do intuitively because you know, let me explain about intuition a moment because this is an important part of this. You know, my understanding um, is that, you know, the journey of the soul begins when a part of you separates out from divine unity and becomes a distinct ball of light. And at that moment of departure, you know, your bliss, ecstasy, euphoria, all is good. And then eventually in that long soul journey, you eventually get around to doing human incarnations. Okay. And in some of these incarnations, you have traumas or wounds that don't get healed by the time of that, that, that death of that incarnation. And the way I like to describe this, I call it the great onion of consciousness. Okay, so the idea, it's, it's a metaphor, but it's the closest I can get to describing what I perceive as the reality. So at the core, just perfect crystalline light, bliss, ecstasy, euphoria, the core is perfect divinity, okay? And then around that are these layers of pain, and, and they layer up like an onion, and thus you could, you know, the, and then outside that onion is the human part, just outside of it, looking in, okay? So I, I can probably feel some of my divinity, some of that bliss, and yet a lot of it is blocked by the old layers of pain. And see, so the idea is if you can peel those layers of the onion off and permanently clear even one layer, it creates a dramatic shift of consciousness. And this, of course, goes into the realm of shadow work. Now, I am, I am tangenting just a bit, but I want to give this larger perspective so it all really makes sense in a, in a coherent way. So if I can do even one good piece of shadow work and peel just the outer layer of that onion, then there's more light available to me as the human, and I go into a deeper awakening. Okay, so um, now this, this I'm gonna, I did go on a bit of a tangent, I'm gonna bring this back now to intuition. Intuition comes from the awakened part. I'm gonna add a little bit of information now. So, so here we are, the soul preparing for the body's invocation. I'm sorry, the body's incarnation. And if you want more on this, the best book I know of to, on this subject is uh, um, by Robert, uh, hang on, it's called Journey of Souls by Michael Newton, incredible book on, how, on what the soul does prior to incarnation to prepare. It's extraordinary. So anyhow, it says, okay, I'm going to go. And for most of, most of not all of us, the following is true. You, you send down the consciousness into the human body and you give yourself amnesia. You say, in order to have this human connection, I must forget a lot of what I am. I must forget my divinity. I must believe for a while I'm a separate, unique being that is just it and nothing more. Okay? So, and yet, and this, this individuated human has free will, and it can do or not do anything at once. And what the part of the soul that stayed back does is it watches the human experience in real time, and it sends down intuitions which we might think of just a little flash or just a knowing. I like to say an intuition is when you just know it in your bones. 
you know, there's, there's not, it's not logical, it's not rational, you just know it for no reason at all, but you, you know it for sure. Um, when I've asked hundreds of my clients over the years, how do you know what is intuition versus just a random thought? They say, I know it's intuition because at the moment the thought arises, there's absolute certainty. Okay, so that's the only way I know for sure to tell if it's intuition or not. Okay, but then, even then, that human can say, yes, I will or won't I, or no, I won't do that. So, so when you get into a body awakening, the third benefit is that that part of you that was outside you sending down intuitions is now driving you. The divine literally drives the body now. And so you actually have your intuition online all the time. And so you, it's possible to operate then in continuous flow state and if anyone's ever been in flow state, a lot of times you get there under athletics or doing music or something creative, time disappears. There's, there's not a sense of I'm doing, it's more like a sense of I'm being done. Things are just unfolding organically and naturally. I just somehow know what to do without even having to think about it. So it's that state constantly. You can imagine that, okay? <laughs> yeah. so the third benefit is just being in flow state pretty much continuously and just knowing what to do through intuition a whole lot more than before. The fourth and final benefit is there's just a lot more bliss. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my, when I wake up in the morning, you know, the state I wake up in naturally is the state I used to have to drink ayahuasca to get to, you know, and, and it's just, it's beautiful. It's bliss. I, and you, you actually get used to it. It's like, oh yeah, it's my normal now. I like it. <laughs> so, so to recap, the four benefits that are most easily described in embodied awakening is um, you just know what to do with having to think about it. There's more bliss. Everything you're responsible for, you do more responsibly and joyfully, and there's a lot more harmony, flow, ease, and grace overall. Mm -hmm. So that's the general shift. And when I describe it and say, does that sound okay to you? I've, I've yet to have a person say, no, that sounds terrible. I don't want that. <laughs> no, it sounds great. It sounds great. And that's, you know, that, that is what we're all looking for, right? To be able to have more bliss, to have more ease and grace in our day to day lives, and to continue to create our lives because we are living here in the three D reality. That's not that's not going to change. So right. how can we create more effectively with more ease, with more harmony, with more balance, etc.? That's what we're all looking for, right? So right. Um, I wanted to share really quickly for those of you who don't know Benjamin. Um, like I said, he, he has been on our show many times in the past. Benjamin is an astrologer. He's a shamanic healer, an awakening activator, and a life coach. And so he consistently facilitates powerful healings and spiritual awakenings in his individual and group sessions and has devoted himself to over 40 years of spiritual practice. And so, you know, one of the things that I love about everything that Benjamin does is like it's he's so... He has such integrity and goes really deep into his work. You know, he tends to over deliver because he cares. Um, and so the, you know, when I have had, you know, when I've worked with Benjamin myself in the past, it's been amazing. It's been wonderful. And I, I learned so much about myself um, and what's possible, uh, you know, when I'm working with him. And so he also, Benjamin runs the Awakening Plus online membership, which we're going to talk about later. He hosts This Week in Astrology, which is the top 10 astrology podcast, uh, is a three-time best astrology winner, is a, is a professionally certified astrologer and has done over 8,000 astrology, shamanic healing, and life coaching sessions with a global clientele, has lectured or taught at five national astrology conferences and retreats, and he wrote the shamanic astrology chapter in the book, Transpersonal Astrology Explorations at the Frontier. And so he's been doing a lot of personal work himself, you know, um, as he's also sharing with clients. And, you know, so he's done Kriya Yoga, he's done Vipassana Buddhism, he's done, he's done Peruvian Shamanism, he's done Ayahuasca and San Pedro Plant Spirit Medicine and his own invocations, which are so powerful. So I wanted to share a little bit about who Benjamin is as we continue to talk about the embodied awakening, as well as we're going to actually learn the technique so that we can do it for ourselves and how we can start to make that our new normal because let's face it we all would like to upgrade our lives right be more of our higher selves and create with more eh, grace you know sometimes it feels like when, when we're creating it's haphazard and it's, it doesn't always go the way we want but with you know working with this embodied awakening i i'm a i'm getting that you you would have more consistent, reliable creations as you're moving forward. Because there's harmony, there's peace, there's ease, there's the intuitive knowing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that. 
all that and more. <laughs> and since you mentioned astrology, I'll just mention one astrology factor that is like the, this is a year astrologers have been waiting for 2020 for many years. And, and there's one signature event that overrides everything else. There's a, a, this year a triple conjunction in Capricorn of three planets, Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And basically, this is so intense. I mean, here we are in the latter part of February 2020. And I mean, I've had so much challenging catalyst already this year. Yeah. And um, I know many people who are very awake, very conscious, very high vibration beings. Every single one of them is getting hit with major catalyst. If there's any bit of shadow work undone, it's coming up. And my sense is it's happening globally. Um, and if you look at just world events right now, there's a lot of challenging things happening on the global scale. And it's just that kind of year. It's a, it's a good year on a personal level to say, okay, it's a good year to really have good shadow work tools. And if we have time, I can, I can also throw in an extra shadow work tool toward the end of the call if there's time for that. Awesome. But, but basically, you don't want to be running from your dark stuff now. You want to be facing it directly. You want to be having a powerful tool to clear it, process it, you know, get it either out of your system or integrate it in so it's, it's turned to light. Um, and it's, a, it's an important time to be willing to go into the psyche and not run from your, your dark stuff because it's all coming up this year. That which doesn't serve you wants to be destroyed now or transformed. And it's also a great time with there's new structures that are aligned with your soul purpose. It's time to create them. Because Pluto and Saturn together are incredible for structure. They will tear down the structure that doesn't serve and they can create a very potent new structure for what does. And Jupiter just amplifies it all. Jupiter mm -hmm. just expands whatever it touches. <laughs> and these awesome. Three, so that's exciting, right? Yeah. And through, these three planets just crisscross each other all year. Okay. Cool. It's extraordinary. So it's a, it's a very, so if you're having a hard time, it ain't just you. It's just about everybody else. Anyone who's conscious is, is going through intense process right now. Yeah. So it's like a year. Yeah. And if it's not you, it's your partner. It's your, somebody in your life is going through something, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're probably catalyzing you with their something, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. And so, you know, what's what's important with all that is to say that you know, as your stuff is coming up, let it come up and deal with it. Heal it, clear it, bless it, whatever you got to do with it. Yeah. Don't ignore it. Don't don't put your head in the sand. You know, it, oh. you know, let it come up. And at the same time, keep creating. Keep yeah. creating. Don't wait for all the shadow work to be finished before you start to create. No, it'll never be finished. Yeah, We're and that'll never work that way, right? Can so, I, can I address shadow work? Um, so basically, that can work on three levels. Okay. So, and I'm I'm working all three of the levels that I'm about to describe. The first level is just your personal stuff, your own wounds from this lifetime that you brought in from past lives. You get enough of that healed, you'll be put to work on your family lineage, and you'll start healing things from your ancestors and even you know progeny into the future. This all stuff works forward and backward in time. And if you get enough of that cleared up, you may be put to work clearing for absolute strangers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because, you know, from the highest perspective, there's nothing but you. There's only God here. God entertains itself by pretending to be different things and different people. Okay. But there's, you know, the great sage Ramana Maharshi from India was, I understand he was once asked, what do we do about other people? And he said, there are no other people. <laughs> <laughs> It's you, right? Yeah. So basically, if you feel like you're, you're, some stuff is coming up that isn't even yours, congratulations. You, you've become advanced enough that you're being given the honor of clearing heavy energy for someone else, even if you don't know them. I've done this many times in ceremonies and other times too. And basically, there's always benefit to it selfishly because if you clear stuff, even if it wasn't yours in the first place, it's like at the end of this process, you know, it's like the pearl in the oyster, this, this wonderful in what the in Indian shamanism, what they would call Sami, S-A-M-I, this, this amazing high vibration celestial energy, you know, comes and blesses you and expands your consciousness. So this uh, shadow work well done, even if it wasn't yours to start with, still blesses you and still expands consciousness. So, you know, the game is so beautiful. When you serve selflessly for others, you always receive benefit, even if you don't ask for it. The, 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 the situation is rigged to reward selfless effort. It's a beautiful system. Right. So when you're doing the shadow work, just remember, it's not just for you. You might think it's just for you, but it's not just for you. It's for you, it's for your family, and it's for the collective, right? As we've all been saying. And so, but when you are doing the work, when you're doing the, the, the clearing work, come from a place of gratitude, come from a place of appreciation, come from a place of saying thank you, you know, because you get to do the work instead of, you know, cursing and, you know, 
getting frustrated. It's like, why is this still happening? Why, why, why am I, when will this ever end? I know a lot of people ask that question. When is this ever going to end? You know, how yeah. long do I have to keep clearing? <laughs> a lot of people ask that question. And it, it may never stop. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I maybe know one person who claims she's not clearing stuff anymore. Everyone else I know is still working it. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you one attitude that's been really helpful to me. Especially I mentioned at the beginning of the call that my partner Kiesel had a stroke in December, and both she and I did something that when we tell it to people they kind of raise their eyebrows. We say we immediately accepted that this was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. We didn't waste any time saying why did this happen to us? How terrible the universe is? Any of that nonsense? We said okay, our, our reality just shifted. We weren't expecting this. But we both have a philosophy. If it happened, it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And in the book, Journey of Souls, Michael Newton talks about how the most ambitious souls choose the most challenging lifetimes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why am I so ambitious? Ah, you know, and that is one of the things I do, I, I claim is that I am quite ambitious. It's like, oh my God. So, but yeah. And, and that's the thing, if you are putting yourself out there, if you're, you know, on the front lines, so to speak, you ask to be here, you ask to do this work, you ask to, I don't know what, sometimes I wonder, <laughs> to be honest, sometimes like, what, what did I ask for, you know, but we did. There's something I, I heard uh, uh, Eckhart Tolle being interviewed by Oprah, and, um, and I, I, you know, my, our, our attitude is, you know, if it happens, it was supposed to happen, challenge that arises was chosen by the soul in advance and it's all perfect mm -hmm. so there's no sense fussing and fighting about it and <laughs> Hector totally addressed this directly he said well he says that's hard for some people to swallow so what i would suggest to people is say act as if it was chosen by the soul you don't have to believe it if that's too big a stretch for you but even just acting as if it was chosen by the soul has a similar relax into it and work with it effect right yeah so I got it <laughs> yeah. yeah act as if you chose this yeah absolutely. so when we say you we don't mean the personality self it's the soul right, right and so right. that's the difference that we have to get is that the soul chose this not this personality not right, Alara, right. not shafali right. no the soul <laughs> that is right, right. you know and, and you know i've learned so deeply that you know benjamin the personality is so ignorant and so limited compared to the vast knowledge and intelligence of the soul yeah. And so it's taken me years and years of surrender, but finally Benjamin has mostly just say, hey, just tell me what to do, I'll do it. You know, you're so much wiser. And, and I've actually gotten to the point a while back where I can hardly even make a decision for my own life. It's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, I could I could spin the wheels endlessly and never come up with a conclusion, but I said, okay, Spirit, just tell me what to do. And boom, my answer pops in, I do it. Yeah. It really simplifies things. Yeah, sometimes you do have to get out of your head. You know, like we, we try and figure stuff out, we try and figure stuff out, and we can't. There are some things we just can't with our limited capacities, you know, we cannot figure it out. And that's when you s surrender and you say, you know what, higher self, you know what, God, source, creator, help me out here. Can you please give me some insight, right? Something, some things to move forward with. And there's no, there's no shame in that, you know, because oh. what are you surrendering to, really? You're surrendering to yourself. Right, yeah. you're you're surrendering your ego and your thinking mind to your greater part of yourself, right? Yeah, and and what I found it's made my life so much better when I've done that, because you know the ego has no clue what it's here for for the most part. I mean, it may have a glimpse of it, but it only has a fraction of the picture at best. Yeah. So what I've learned is that higher self created me. It created Benjamin. It it wants Benjamin to have a certain set of experiences and learnings so that it, the evolving soul can get that little piece of the pie filled in and move along to whatever the next thing is, okay? And I've also discovered that for selfish reasons, it's in Benjamin's best interest to go along for this because when Benjamin just goes along for the ride, he has these extraordinary experiences that are so more, much full of bliss and ecstasy and euphoria than anything he could have planned. You know, as an example, back in 2001, I moved here to Asheville, North Carolina to be a singer-songwriter, right? And my, my life has gone in a radically different direction. I mean, you've told the, the listeners what I do, yeah. and I didn't plan any of that. But it's so much more fun and so much more fulfilling than, than what I'd originally had planned. So what I like to say about awakening is, if you really are serious about it, all, all it requires is everything. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, if you're really devoted to awakening, becoming the most uh, divinely conscious being you can, 
you know, everything else is expendable. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, whatever, whatever aligns with your soul purpose, I will release any relationship, any situation, any job, any circumstance, any possession. It doesn't matter. I will only bring to myself and into my field and keep with me that which serves that highest purpose because that there is no greater joy, no more greater satisfaction or fulfillment than aligning with that. Or at least for me, I'll speak for myself on that, but that's, that's what I've come to. And so, and so most people at this point would say, I don't know what my higher purpose is. I don't know what my soul's purpose is. Okay. Well, there's several ways to go about that. One is to consult your local astrologer. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, astrology is very good at, I mean, when I look at a chart, I can look at certain things and give a pretty good description of what soul purpose is. But even if you don't go that far, you know, it's actually so simple. Okay. What are you most enthusiastic about? You know, enthusiasm is God saying, go do that. Yeah. Go have an experience. So what I would encourage people to do is, you know, just feel within themselves, what do they feel magnetically drawn toward? You know, and that's what your soul would like you to do. Enthusiasm has its root word theos, which is the word for divine. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm is God saying yes. And, and, and I'll also share another thought around this, which is, you know, for most of us, again, there are some limited exceptions, but for most of us, we're born into this realm, into a realm of lies and illusions, okay? Mm -hmm. We are acculturated and, you know, taught certain things, most of which are false, okay? And if you are just a sheep going with the flow, then you just buy into that and you stay, you know, one of the unawakened beings. If you're ready to awaken and become awake, then layer by layer, you, oh my God, I was taught that and it's absolute nonsense. And you let that lie fall away and then you're a little more conscious and awake. You, re you, you begin to peel away the layers of illusion and deception that you chose to be born into and you grow and grow into more and more layers of, of knowing. And then it also shifts into levels of consciousness that can't even be verbalized. You realize, wow, I thought five senses was pretty cool, but now I'm getting this other whole dimension of divine bliss, ecstasy, and euphoria that I can't even verbalize, but I like it and I want more of it. And they go together as you peel away the illusions of thought, then you move more and more into the awakeness of what you are until you can get to the point that I got to a while back, which is my sixth sense is constantly on. It's never turned off. I always have awareness of the energetics of the spaces I'm in along with my five senses. And it's just as natural to me as breathing now. So you become an expanded being on working on more levels, which is far more satisfying and fun. And also, of course, gives you more capability to do what you're here to do. So it, it's just a win all the way around. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Um, I wanted to share really quickly, Susanna had a question a while back, um, which I'm not sure if I'm even reading it properly, Susanna. How, how, to make dif how can you make a difference with situations where clearing other stuff keeps you moving forward? So even when you're clearing other people's stuff you still keep moving forward because you know and i think she means because you're so empathetic you like you're so you know like empathic. yeah empathic <laughs> okay. so, so i'm not totally clear on what she's driving could you read her question one more time i can't it's not quite clear either um, one more time. Just give me what she wrote and i'll see what i can do with it well she wrote how then make a difference with situations where clearing other stuff keeps you moving forward meaning being too empathic Okay. All right. So I'll just address the being too empathic because because I I attract um, HSPs like moths to a flame. HSP is the official acronym for highly sensitive person. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and I I've become a highly sensitive person myself. It took me a while to to peel it up layers to get there. But basically, what I would say is the simplest way I can answer that question is if you are a highly sensitive person, and that usually means you're feeling other people's emotions, especially the more challenging emotions and you walk into a room, you feel the vibe of the room real intensely. A lot of these people tend to isolate a lot because it's so intense to feel this stuff or they pick up heavy energy, you don't know how to clear it. So basically you're sensitive and this is actually a perfect situation once you attain a baseline awakening. Until then you're like a dry sponge that just soaks up everything in your environment and you feel like a garbage dump because you're picking up everyone else's crap and just it gets all dumped on you and it feels terrible. But once you get that basic awakening, once you merge with the higher self and get that light lit inside you, then you start radiating outward. And this is where the tide shifts. The tide starts going the other direction. Now you are, as an awakened being, you have a natural 
divine love and unconditional love to a basic degree. I mean, it gets much larger as you awaken more fully because there's so many layers to awakening. It's not just a one shot, okay? Then you can radiate out love and light. And then you see, oh, this is why I was made so porous. So I could get the divine light lit in me and radiate it out to the world. The energy needs to go the other direction now. So just having that basic awakening online radically shifts this. Now, Andean shamanism, um, which I've been studying a lot in recent months, actually has a technique for eating hucha. Now, let me, let me define words. Hucha is heavy energy. And, and this is way too advanced for blisters to do it a shot. But the technique I'm going to give them today is the foundational technique for building up the ability to do that. Okay. But there, there's this energy center right around the belly button called the Cosco. Now, in other, it has other names and different uh, practices. It's called the Lower Dantian. It's called the Hara. It's called the Central Burner. But it's this, this large energy center about the size of a grapefruit right around the belly button. And basically, this has a little mouth on the front of it that when you become, you know, capable enough and don't do it before then, you can actually open that little mouth and pull in heavy energy. And this energy center is custom built for digesting hucha, composting it. And hucha is the word in Andean shamanism for waste energy. Uh, the best way I can describe it, hucha is the energy equivalent of pisser poop. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just it. the heavy yeah. energy in the field, right? And you can actually, I, I do this all the time. I just pull it into my belly and, and say, Costco digest, and it, it all flushes, and the residue goes down into Mother Earth, and it's done. And, and someone who's trained in this kind of thing can walk into a room that's all full of this heavy, you know, thick energy, and can literally just suck it all into themselves and transmute it, and they can literally clear the room energetically by doing that. Mm -hmm. And none of it stays in you. So this is another thing, those of you who feel like they're just dark energy absorbers and they just pick up all this crap, you know, first get your own body awakening on. And then if you're interested, learn this technique. And um, if you want to read a book that describes all this really beautifully, uh, there's a book called The Fourth Level. Um, Elizabeth B. Jenkins is the author. She's, she's a, a, a white person, but she has been welcomed into the Caro tribe of South America and has been taught all their initiatory techniques and initiates people themselves. This book is a series of techniques on how to do that style of work. So if you want to learn how to eat hucha, then that book, The Fourth Level, is a, is a fabulous introduction to that. Awesome. Thank you. And that is, like I said, you know, like Benjamin said, that's something you want to do after you've gotten really good at the basic, um, basic embodied awakening. You know, so and then really, the, you want to have your four signs exercise that I'm going to teach later in this call really down. Awesome. Good. Because if you do it prematurely, you could, you could hurt yourself. Yeah, we don't want that. Definitely I mean, not. This is only and to be used when you, when you know what you're doing and you've really got a strongly developed coast code. It could take months of, of four signs practice before you're ready to do something like that. Okay, yeah. cool. But it's good to know that it exists and yeah. it is good to, because there are some people on the call uh, or in the community who are affected a great deal about with dark energies, et cetera, right? And yeah. they're not sure what to do with it, et cetera. So that might be a good tool for them to use later on as they, you know, after they yeah. learn the stuff today oh, yeah, let and me give a, for a while. Let me give, um, there's two basic clearing tools I'll just mention here in case we forget about them later. One is I actually have an invocation for healing. And this, again, the invocations I teach are designed to delegate all the stuff that needs to get done to the higher self. The ego just gets passive and lets it done. So if you feel, I'll just keep it super simple. Let's say you feel some kind of challenging energy in your field. It could be emotional, it could be physical, whatever. It just doesn't feel good. So you speak to your higher self and you say eight words, maximum healing that serves highest good, please. Sorry, that was seven words. And then you just put your attention wherever that unpleasant feeling is. You put your full attention there. You feel it 100% with no filter. But all you do at the ego level is just feel it. You're not doing anything active. You're just feeling whatever's going on. Just without, and you're not even paying attention to thoughts. You're just feeling the sensation. Then that directs the incoming divine energy you invoke to that spot. The divine stirs it up, flushes it out. It usually flushes out the hands or the feet. Sometimes it will just transmute to a higher vibration right where it is and, and charge you up. And the divine makes those calls that ego doesn't have to decide any of that. You just hold your attention there, and usually within 30 seconds to a minute, the stuff will start flushing out, and you'll feel great. I've had people who, on the 10-point pain scale, the doctors use 10 being extreme pain, 1 being numb. They'll say, oh, my God, it's like an 8 or a 9. It really feels horrible. And they'll do simply the healing invocation, and within a couple of minutes, it's down to a zero. 
it's extraordinary how fast because the divine is is such a better healer than your ego is and, and it's and i've never seen a higher self refuse i think the higher selves are actually required to bring in invocation energy like this when you so can you repeat those seven words again yeah it's just maximum healing that serves highest good please it's simple maximum healing that serves highest good please yeah, and you, and then you're, you just, you're asking that of your higher self yeah you're talking to higher self then you hold your attention wherever the unpleasantness is and stay with it until it clears yeah it really couldn't be simpler awesome so now, if somebody wants to type it in the chat just so that you know you got it awesome okay yeah. Now there's Maximum. another tool. Now, now I want to give. I like to give more than one tool because you know not every tool works for every person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another tool they could do is is first let me explain something about Pachamama. Let me first talk about something scientific that everyone understands and then relate it to this metaphysical thing. Okay. We humans exhale carbon dioxide, which is exactly what plants need to grow. For them, that's their life energy. So if you still you exhale carbon dioxide, the plant says, "Thank you, just what I needed. Let me take that in." And by the way, I've got this toxin that I, I can't stand. It's called oxygen. Okay. <laughs> Let me get rid of this oxygen because it's really nasty for me. And oh, human cells, that's what I need. Give me the oxygen. Okay. And believe it or not, the hucha that we humans dump, the heavy energy that feels so horrible to us, is like a yummy snack for the earth. I kid you not. This is also from Andean shamanism. Okay. You, when you take that heavy energy and you, you give it to the earth, and so I was like, I'm so sorry, Mama. I hate to burden you with that crap. The brother is like, what are you talking about? That was delicious. Give me more. I love it. Okay. In the same way that the oxygen and carbon dioxide play out between human and plant, they love Pachamama. Mother Earth loves our hucha. So one thing you can do, if you feel heavy energy in you, you can just speak to the earth, which is a conscious being, very, very conscious. Okay. Much faster consciousness than us humans. And say, Pachamama, please take this hucha. I offer it to you as a blessing, as a sacrament. This heavy energy that is best left from me, I now give to you because for you it's a delicious food, okay? And you give her all that hucha, just let it flush out your hands, or your feet, or wherever it's coming from, and she will take that and, and be so happy. Then in, you can then breathe in good energy from her. Part of the Four Suns exercise is to send a cord down to the center of the earth and just energetically breathe in that good solid earth energy up into your body. And the, so in, in, in not only Andean shamanism, but any good form of shamanism, there's always Aini, sacred reciprocity. Aini is A-Y-N-I, another Quechua word um, from their language. And basically you give and receive, you have to do both. You don't take something energetically without giving something back. So in this case, you're giving the earth your heavy energy, which is snack food for her, and you're bringing back the wonderful grounding energy that she offers back. So I hope that made some kind of sense. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. when we're not doing, you know, processing the hucha, we can still send down any any heavy energy that we may be experiencing, right? Well, heavy energy is hucha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One and the same. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Good. Because a lot of times, you know, we talk about that and we say, just send it out, send it down to Mother Earth. Mother Mother Earth will transmute it. Mother Earth will receive it. Yeah. But nobody, no one's ever said. She really likes it. It's yummy. Yeah. <laughs> so there's part of us is like feeling guilty that we're sending it down to Mother Earth. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like me, I, I would feel guilty. Like, I don't want to send it down to Mother Earth. It's yucky. <laughs> well, if you have doubt about that, ask her. If you have the ability to communicate with her, ask her, hey, this, this heavy stuff I just gave you, did you enjoy that? Was that yummy for you? And just see what she says. Mm -hmm. Get a sense of her response to that. If you have the yeah. ability to, to sense what she's, you know, telling you. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, my good. Word. <laughs> <laughs> good. I, yeah, and that's the thing. It's like experiment for yourself. You know, yeah. try try this stuff that Benjamin's sharing. Try it for yourself. Experiment with it. Ask questions. See how it feels for you. Mm -hmm. Right. It's always about that. With anything, experiment for yourself and see 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 what happens for yourself. Because someone else's experience is not going to be the same as your own experience. But you won't know until you actually do it. Yeah, if you feel intuitively guided to check something out, check it out, see if it works for you. Mm -hmm. that, that's another, I'll speak also, we were talking about the path of awakening and what that involves. You know, awaken, the more awakened you become, the less you need to follow anyone else's pre-made path. Yeah. You know, the fully awakened people are pathless. They just, if, if they choose to keep following a path, it's because 
they choose to do that because they feel like that path will serve others, not because they need it themselves anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But many like Adyashanti, the, the great teacher, I mean, he was a Zen Buddhist for 18 years. And then once he fully had his awakening and started teaching, he dropped Zen Buddhism and just became a non-dual teacher, you know? Yeah. So the, the old analogy is that the river gets you, the boat gets you across the river. Once you're across the river, you don't need the boat. You know, once you wake up, you don't need the path that got you there. You're already independent. Of it. Yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good. So do we want to um, learn about the different techniques now? Like actually sure. like do them? Lovely. Okay. And uh, let me also get a, uh, a sense of time. How much time do we have remaining to do the two exercises and do whatever else we're going to do? How much time do you want? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I imagine we could knock all this out easily in 45 minutes or less. Is that too much time or? Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I don't want to, I'm not, as your listeners hopefully have learned, I'm not one to waste time. I want to get it done efficiently. So, so let me, let me throw something in here though. Um, I assume that people will be able to watch the replay of this if they didn't catch it live. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So you all on the replay, this may sound weird, but you're about to affect what happens. I don't care how much after the fact you're watching this, in this this call is being held in the Akashic Records beyond time and space once it's complete. And you are affecting what's about to happen even as a replay listener or watcher. So just know that, just give it, I just, what I like to say is just act as if you're right here in the room with me and give it just as much attention. You know, please don't do anything else while you're doing these techniques. You know, mm -hmm. Pause it and come back to it if you need to. So really quickly before we start, would it be better to talk about your free gift and special offer now or wait till later? Um, we could do it now and then we could mention it again later as a recap. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. So right. let's, um, so Benjamin has a free gift on the gifts page, as you all know, and it's a 30 day um, free membership. So, and the, and the, uh, the special offer, which is on um, laura.at forward slash show forward slash Benjamin two. And if you're on the live page, you can just click on special offer. This is the, uh, this talks about the, the membership program and you can get it for $99 for the full year. So I'll let Benjamin talk about the awakening plus annual membership, but mm -hmm. the free gift is 30 days of this membership. Right. right? Yeah. Okay. So either way, it's Awakening Plus. So let's describe what that is. Okay. So this is this is the third iteration of a membership I've had running really for over four years. This is by far the best version of it. And it's the basic contents of Awakening Plus is you get three live calls every month. Um, and these calls are usually me and or my partner, Makisala, facilitating. Once a month, we also have a guest presenter and the calls are all about awakening or healing or both. And we have a wide variety of formats, but it's all about how can we take it to the next level of your own awakening and healing. Um, so on one level, three live calls a month. There, there may even be more downstream, but that's the current number. Um, as a member, you also get access to the complete archive of all the events ever done. And there's over 200 of them <laughs> in the archives. Every one, carries the full power of the live event that was originally done. Now, how, can, how is this possible? It's because even though you're listening to a recording, they always start with the divine beings being invoked. We spend usually about five minutes calling in several dozen beings of love and light. And those beings, when you listen to the call, they show up in real time for you. And so I've had people like do the same recording like three different times and got a completely different experience all three times because you're not the same person each time you listen to it. So know that you've got a vast archive of super powerful techniques, healing, awakening, et cetera, that can serve you years into the future once you have access to the archive as a member. Another benefit is you have a forum. And it's not on Facebook where there's all these distractions. It's, you know, it's our private forum. Only members go in there. And you can chat up other people. You can you know, exchange you know, ideas or questions. You've got, you know, and, and at, at this point in February 2020, the membership is the forum is still kind of getting started. There's not a whole lot of activity there, but it is starting to warm up a little bit. So I can't claim it's like super busy at the moment, but it is gonna, it is catching on slowly but surely. The fourth benefit is you get an accountability partner if you want it. And that means that um, there, there's some fascinating studies of do people get stuff done or not? And there's this organization that studies these things that say, okay, if, if you just tell another person your goal, 
you're, you have now a 65% chance of 65% chance of getting it done. But if you have an accountability partner and you, you've told that person, I'm going to check with you on this day and you're going to ask me, did I do it or not? All of a sudden, the odds of that getting completed go to 95%. It's extraordinary how much more likely you are to get something if you have something holding you accountable for it. And as part of your Awakening Plus membership benefit, you can get an accountability partner for free and you two, between the two of you, work out what do you want to hold each other accountable for in any area of your life. I mean, there's literally accountability programs that people pay hundreds of dollars a year for just to get that. And this is just like one feature of several in Awakening Plus. And if you want to be held accountable to your spiritual goals or whatever, you can do that. So basically, there's four basic core benefits. You get the live calls three times a month that run between one and two hours. You get the archive of over 200 events already in the, in the archive waiting for you to stream anytime. You've got your um, accountability partner if you want it. And you've got this forum where you can interact with other people who are, you know, all about awakening and healing. So that's Awakening Plus. Awesome. Um, so in terms of the offer, normally that membership is about $199 a year if you go on the annual membership. But we've cut that in half down to 99 mm -hmm. So it, it's a, literally a half price offer. I've, I've never offered it that cheaply before on the annual basis. So it is an extraordinary value. It's also guaranteed. You know, if there's, you know, whether you come in monthly or annual or whatever, I mean, it's a 30 day guarantee. If you don't like it within the first 30 days, you get your money back, no problem. So it's a totally risk free deal as well. Awesome. So that, I guess, does that a, a fair enough description of the program? Absolutely. And they, they can find out more on the special offer page, which is at lr.at forward slash show forward slash Benjamin two. Mm -hmm. And on the gifts page is the um, the free 30 day membership. So you can try it out for 30 days there too. Okay. So why not, you know, check it out, you know, try it out, play with it and um, go from there. Yeah. So I'd love anyone to pop in there and give it a shot. See if you like it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good. All right. So let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> so my invitation now, once again, please give this your full attention if you're going to do it. Um, and, uh, just give it your best shot, close your eyes now, and uh, just take a moment to become aware of how your body is right now. We're gonna start with the embodied awakening invocation. Once we've got that, we'll add the four suns exercise on top of it. Hmm. So just feel the body as it is, don't change anything. And now notice if you have awareness, not just of the physical body, but of the energy around you, the aura. Um, the bubble of energy around you, just see if you have any perception of that as well, whether you see it or feel it, whatever, just see if there's awareness of it. And you're just getting your baseline here, just noticing this is where I'm starting from. That way you can consciously compare it a little later to see if anything has shifted for you. So I'm actually now getting the vibe of everyone who's doing it in real time or whoever will do this. So how quickly you all do this is gonna affect how fast I go. <laughs> So if you're doing this, just do the best you can. Don't feel pressured, but just give it your full attention, give it your best shot, and this will help us move along efficiently. So we're now going to, there, there's a little bit I have to say um, before I can do this technique. And this is first the idea that, you know, the unawakened self, the ego drives the car. The awakened self, the divine drives. So I'm basically do this only if you're willing to let your divine drive now when your ego, so to speak, will slide to the passenger seat. Now I need your ego to know that it's safe and that this is reversible. So if you haven't done something like this before, just know that if you don't like your divine's driving, you can just immediately take the wheel. The divine will step out with no fuss. You instantly have your old status quo of ego control back. So I need to really emphasize no risk instantly reversible you're just trying it on for size and then the benefits we already talked about but i'll just recap them super briefly in embodied awakening there's a lot more harmony flow ease and grace everything you're responsible for you do more responsibly and joyfully instead of having to figure things out so much you just know what to do intuitively and there's much more bliss so if you like that then um, we're about to do the actual invocation spoken to the higher self. It's eight words long. I'm now going to preview it. This is not the real deal. You don't have to memorize it. This is just your preview. The words are going to be maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good place. 
And that also guarantees you're not going to get too much of it because you're only going to get as much as serves you. So your divine self will give you exactly the right amount that you're perfectly ready for it now. So it's time to do it. So if you'd like to have the experience, uh, say the following words to your higher self out loud if you can, silently if you must, but please repeat them now if you wish. Maximum embodied awakening. That serves highest good please. Now release the words that will not help you to remember them or repeat them. Your higher self heard you the first time. Now your job is to feel your breath. Please do not do any breath control. Let the breath do whatever it wants. I want you simply to note the sensation in the body of the breath when it comes in or goes out. Whatever the breath does is fine. You're just noticing what it's doing on its own. And that is your focus, simple breath awareness. As you're doing that, I will give you a few quick little pointers that will let you do this with the easiest efficiency. Please, I recommend you do not use any effort or willpower to try to make anything happen or stop anything from happening. I recommend you do not deliberately visualize or imagine anything. Just feel breath passively. Now, based on what I'm feeling, a lot of energy is coming into me, which lets us know that most or all the people are feeling that. So if you feel new energy coming into your body, soaking into your cells, that's exactly how it works. Your higher self is coming in and starting to saturate your body with this beautiful energy. Just relax, let it come in. Your higher self is monitoring you very carefully, gauging your response to its incoming energy. It's only going to bring it in as fast as is comfortable for you. You do not have to regulate or control it. Just relax, let it come in. Just to be super clear, what's coming in is your own higher self. This is you coming to you. I, Benjamin, am not making anything happen. I'm just giving you the instructions and kind of monitoring the overall flow of how everyone's doing. So just relax and let it come in and saturate. The, the other instruction is around distractions. So if you become aware your attention is on anything other than your breath, we are going to call that a distraction. Your response, first off, do not fight the distraction. Do not try to change it. Please let that distraction be exactly as it is with no resistance. However, that distraction is not you. It is an uninvited guest. And you don't have to pay any more attention to it. So your response is to relax back into the breath again, very gently, very persistently. If the distraction hangs out in the background, yammering away, fine, let it. Uh, there's room for both of you guys. So you, the human, just pay attention to the breath, let the distraction do whatever it wants in the background, no problem. Just keep relaxing back into breath, very gently, very persistently. And that's the best strategy I know to work with anything that arises that is not just breath awareness. Once you've invoked, there's no thought that can help you. Ignore all thought. All thought is treated as distraction regardless of its content. You just want to feel that breath. Ooh, it's starting to feel really nice. So uh, the group is doing really well. Again, that includes live callers and folks on the recording. So just relax and let the energy saturate you. Hmm. If you're not used to it, it will feel kind of unusual, but it will be a good kind of unusual. And again, know that it will never give you more than you're ready for. It's going to stretch you a little bit beyond where you've been, but it's not going to get so intense that it's going to be overwhelming. I've never, in all the years I've given invocations, I've never had a single report of overwhelm ever. You are safe. Your divine is going to watch carefully and only give you as much as you're ready for. So relax. Know that you're in a safe zone. Let the divine bring you the perfect amount of awakening for this moment. And it will always give you more later. Good. So some of us have hit embodied awakening now. Again, I'm speaking of both live and recorded callers. Just if you're there, um, how will you know? There's four things that will be simultaneously true. There's no mental chatter. 
There's no challenging emotion. It's peaceful and it's effortless. It literally holds itself automatically. You're just sitting there and all this stuff is happening on autopilot. You're not having to repress thoughts. You're not having to stop emotions. They're simply not arising in the first place. So if you're in that space, no mental chatter, no challenging emotion and peaceful, all without any effort, that's how you know you hit embodied awakening. And what that means technically is your higher self, that light body has completely aligned up with your physical body. It's right in full alignment. And anytime that alignment is complete, that's the effect. In effect, the human part of you gets to experience the consciousness of the higher self. So if you're there, just relax, hold the space. You're gonna make it easier for everyone else to get there. Again, regardless of their position in time and space, just hold it, relax into that, enjoy it. For some of you, this is old hat. You've been doing this for years. For some of you, it's a brand new experience. Whatever it is, just rest in it. Know that this technique, however deeply you've awakened, can always take you a level deeper forever. Just relax into that beautiful, spacious place. There's one little refinement that can help, by the way, if you aren't quite there yet. Um, often people use excessive effort to hold awareness of the breath, and I want to help you feel how little effort actually is needed for that. So to, to experience this, for starters, uh, everyone, for a sec, just go to zero effort. Drop the focus on the breath and just be for a moment. Just exist. Whatever arises, arises. It's fine. Just exist for a moment, allowing whatever comes. Okay, if you went that long with no mental chatter or challenging emotions, you're definitely an embodied awakening. Good job. If not, you now know what zero effort feels like. So now notice at zero effort, is there any breath awareness spontaneously arising? So as you rest in zero, just notice, am I or am I not noticing breath at all? If at zero effort, there's even a tinge of breath awareness, then zero effort's enough, stay at zero and let that tiny bit of breath awareness arise. Even the tiniest trace of breath awareness is enough for this purpose. If it's zero effort, you've got no breath awareness left at all, then put a teeny tiny bit of effort forward, about as much effort as the touch of a feather, and use just that much effort to feel the breath. You experiment and say, what's the least effort I can use to be aware of breath at all? And if you have any breath awareness at all, try using a bit less effort and just kind of play with that a little bit until you've found the minimum effort needed to feel breath, which might be zero effort, might be just a teeny tiny bit, but it's probably way less than you thought it was. So just find that, that perfect balance of barely enough effort to feel the breath and then rest at that level. If there's like a 10 point effort scale, a lot of people start at seven or eight, they end up around a 0.2 or a 0.3. That's how radical the difference can be. So just barely enough effort to feel breath and rest in that for a moment. Yeah, the, the embodied awakening is much stronger in the field now. So just take a moment and, and whether you're feeling it or not, um, if you're there, congratulations. You hit it, and if not, then you can of course repeat this replay and you know keep working it until you do get it. So let me check with you, Laura. Do you feel like you're in that embodied awakening state? Good. Okay. So we'll leave just a moment. I'm I'm gonna leave just one more brief bit of silence just for you all to feel where you're at. If you are or not in embodied awakening, and don't judge yourself. Wherever you're at is fine. You just do your best. It always gets better over time. So just take a moment and feel where you're at regarding embodied awakening. Okay, so now we get to do the four suns exercise. <laughs>
Again, this is a different sort of technique. What that what we just did was a surrender technique. The divine does it all for you. This next is an ego-driven technique. So I want you to put your attention now in the COSCO, which has a weird spelling. It's Q-O-S-Q-O. -O. Again, that's that energy center right behind the belly button in the center of the body, maybe a tiny bit below it. Um, again, known in other traditions as the Hara, the central, central burner, the, um, there's other names for it too. The, the, anyhow, you know what I'm talking about. Imagine it about the size of a grapefruit just above the pelvic floor. Imagine it bright white. So we're going to, and again, whether you feel it or see it or however you perceive this is fine. If you're just imagining it, that's fine too. Just do the best you can. It all becomes more real the more you practice it. So the first part of the technique is each time you inhale, you imagine that you're inhaling right into the Costco. And each time you inhale, it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter. So as you inhale at your own pace, just imagine getting a bit bigger, a bit brighter, a bit more powerful. As you exhale, just relax. And then you inhale and it gets a little bigger, a little brighter. So do that a few times at your own comfortable rate inhaling and really making that coast go larger and brighter. You may find as you continue this that you'll be able to perceive it more clearly. You'll either feel it uh, kinesthetically a little better or you'll have a better visual on it if you have inner sight. Just you know, a few breaths in and out to really get a sense of the coast go in your body. Notice already, just putting your attention there has shifted your field, and you feel different now than when you were just hanging out in that pure embodied awakening state. Okay, one more breath into the Coast Co. Good. So that's the first of the four suns. The second sun is hanging out in the center of the earth. So now imagine a taproot as big around as your hips. Now, being sent downward from that Costco, down into the floor or the earth or wherever you're sitting, wherever you're at, let it go down until it enters the earth itself. And it burrows rapidly down thousands of miles, very quickly, right to the center of the earth. And that tip of that root goes right into the molten core of the planet. So you now have just sent down a tap root thousands of miles long, it may even be growing horizontal roots out to kind of really lock it into the earth really beautifully. And now, when we inhale, we're going to breathe up the energy of Pachamama, which is the Quechua word for earth. So as you inhale, bring that beautiful energy from the center of the earth right up into the Costco, smack into the center of that center at the bottom of the body. Inhale it in. And when you exhale, exhale back gratitude to Mother Earth. Thank her for her beautiful energy. Next time you inhale, once again, inhale that energy from the center of the Earth. Imagine it coming smack up into the Coast Go and adding its energy there. And then you exhale back gratitude once again. Do this a few times at your own rate. Inhaling the Earth energy, the Pachamama energy into the Coast Go. Exhaling back gratitude. As you do this, you may notice the body starts shifting. It, you feel more solidly rooted to the earth. You just feel grounded. You feel a part of the planet. If that feels really good right there, well done. Okay, so take a moment, feel the body overall. Notice how much more rooted you feel. Now, you may also note you probably haven't lost the embodied awakening you had. There's just a little more earth awareness added. So now, from the Costco, now we're gonna send a tube up um, of what's called the central channel in Chinese medicine, which is just coming right in front of the spine. 
send this tube up out the top of the head, um, if you're in a building, up through the roof of the building, out into the air, way up through the atmosphere until it goes beyond the planet, and send this tube smack into the center of the sun, the sun at the center of our solar system, soul. And just imagine that tube like going smack into the center of the sun. And this time you'll inhale down. So when you inhale, bring that warm golden light of the sun down that tube into the Costco, saturate the Costco with that brilliant light. Exhale, gratitude back up to the sun. In Quechua, they refer to the sun as Inti Taita. Inti Taita. It doesn't matter if you use the word, I just thought you might like to know it. So you inhale the golden energy from Inti Taita into the Costco, down that tube. And when you exhale, gratitude back to the sun. And at your own rate, just inhale that beautiful golden light into the Costco, exhale that gratitude as you continue doing this a few times, you will probably feel the energetic shift of the body overall as you bring in this golden light. Inhale the golden light, exhale gratitude back to the sun. Yeah, a lot of you are feeling that shift. Now. I'm feeling the shift myself. And what I feel when I lead this stuff is the composite of what everyone's doing live or on the recording. So notice how much more vibrant your, your aura is getting, how the, the whole energy field in your body is just lighting up more intensely, more vibrantly, more, you might even say passionately. So inhale the light of the sun down that tube into the Costco at the base of the body. Exhale that gratitude a couple of more times. Well done. Now we extend the tube out the back of the sun all the way to the center of the Milky Way galaxy, the galaxy we are a part of. So imagine that tube just going smack into that huge black hole at the center of our galaxy. And the light here is black. Now to be super clear, black does not mean bad. It does not mean evil. It just means black the void, the absence of light. And now we're gonna breathe this perfect black light from the central sun at the center of the galaxy down that tube into the Costco and exhale gratitude back to the center of the galaxy, which in Quechua is called Hatun Inti, H-A-T-U-N-I-N-T-I. -I. Inhale the perfect black light of the central sun Exhale back gratitude to it. Thank you, Hatuninti. Now, inhaling this light into the Costco um, has some very interesting effects. You can start to feel like everything and nothing. Um, hard to describe, but it's like you you become aware of the more cosmic essence. And in their cosmology, this is as high as it gets. This is like divine source. This is where all souls come from in the, in the um, Indian mythology. So we're breathing this energy in from the very highest divine source in their realm of conception. So inhale that perfect dark light down into the Costco. Exhale back gratitude. And you may start to feel like everything and nothing at the same time. Just a few more times. Inhale the dark light into the core of the Costco. Exhale that gratitude to the black hole in the center of the galaxy. It's beautiful conscious being. Mm -hmm. 
just one or two more. Uh, the feeling is really nice. And to be everything and nothing is very hard to describe, but just notice this, this, this sensation you're having. And just whatever that is, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Hmm. Okay, good. Now keeping your eyes closed. Okay, that's, we've got all four suns. Take a moment and feel the Costco, the energy center at the root of the body. You see how that feels. Perceive it in whatever way is easiest for you. Then, just as we did when we started, become aware of the whole physical body and see if it's true for you. This physical body of yours feels a whole lot more like energy than flesh now. Once you awaken as energy, as divine consciousness, you perceive the physical world more as energy than a solid form. So see if your physical body feels pretty like energy. And then expand your awareness to the bubble of energy around you. How does that feel? Feel it separately. And then feel it along with the physical body as a unit. Very good. So just take a moment and see if you don't feel a bit like everything and nothing at the same time. See if you feel a bit like the marriage of heaven and earth your roots deeply embedded into the earth for practical, grounded accomplishment in 3D, your roots in the earth, and see if you don't feel your branches going way up into the heavens, into those etheric realms. And uh, the phrase that's commonly used for this is walking between the worlds. Sometimes it's called the marriage of heaven and earth. It's being fully in your humanity and fully in, in your divinity all at the same time. Not the old paradigm of you got to leave your body to wake up, but the awakening comes to you. And you live your life based in that awakened state. So take just one moment longer. Just try to feel your energy without getting mental. Just have the perception of it on a purely energetic level, ignore thought for a moment and just have the energetic experience. Good, and now you can open your eyes. Laura, how are you doing? Do I have to open my eyes? Do I have to come back? No, you have free will, you can do or not do whatever. <laughs> See, but, but you see, you never left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely. It, it's, it's, it's not something you can really describe, you know, um, other than I feel good. I feel good. I feel like I can feel my body, but there's more of the body's here, but it's more of the other energy that is more um, predominant. Right. If that makes sense. But are they are they all happy together? Is yes. there a co-presence? You might yeah. say. Yeah, that's what it's about. It's about systematically, you know, doing your daily human thing, but having more and more divine awareness in the mix. Would be yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it definitely feels good. I feel more mm, alive, even. Yeah, I would have to say, you know, more, more, but it's not a physical aliveness. It's yeah, there's else. energetic vitality, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Nice. Good. So yeah, how's everybody else feeling? I know we didn't take too many questions yet, but how's everybody feeling? Does anybody have any questions? Um, I can't always talk right after something like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, so that's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. You can. Um, but yeah, if you'd, if you'd like to share in the chat or if you want to raise your hand and share what you experienced or if you have a question about it as well. Um, I wasn't doing very much thinking, to be honest. Uh -huh. You know, during the whole process, there, were, there was my mind, like I didn't have too many distractions. My mind didn't wander very much or anything like that. 
Okay. Um, I did notice that, you know, before the call had started, I wasn't feeling too great, mm -hmm. but um, I noticed that during the, the process, that discomfort completely disappeared. Oh, good. You know, so that was good. <laughs> I was happy with that. I did notice that part, you know, for sure. Nice. Yeah. And, and this, you know, this doesn't take uh, a lot of time to do for yourself. No, in fact, let me, I mean, I can do a four suns exercise in like a minute if I have to. Mm -hmm. Not for plenty of time to make sure people got a chance to really get thoroughly into it. But let me just recap the instructions now that we've done it. This is how really simple it is. First, put your attention in the Costco. Just feel that, that energy center just, just around the belly button in the center mm -hmm. of the body. And just take a few breaths and, and imagine it about the size of a grapefruit and white and just a little bigger, a little brighter for a few breaths. Then send that taproot down to the center of the earth, inhale earth energy up into the Costco, exhale back gratitude. Do that a few times. But then send a tube up from the Costco up to the sun in the center of our solar system, inhale the golden light from the sun into the Costco, exhale back gratitude a few times, extend the tube to the black hole in the center of the galaxy, inhale the black light into the Costco, exhale back gratitude, and that's it. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's, it's there's only only three, there's a uh, well, four steps. First, Costco, center of the earth, sun galaxy and that's it yeah and, and you can literally whip it out once you get the hang of it you can whip it out in about a minute if you need to get it done quickly so carol is asking can it be i have more divine awareness yes yeah that's the whole point of this <laughs> not but not but again not isolated divine awareness but you know embodied useful practical divine awareness yeah definitely that's the thing about Andean shamanism. They don't really have a conception of divinity without the human incarnation. You know, they're all about, we want to have these magnificent states of consciousness, but we want them to be practical, you know? Yeah. We want to have good use of it. So it, it makes our human lives better. Yeah. Exactly. So yay, Carol, good job. <laughs> yes, you definitely have more aware. And you can keep this state, you know, for longer and longer and longer. You know, and um, do the embodied awakening, do the four suns. It was so easy, right? It was so easy. So yeah. that's something that you can start to implement every day for yourself to give you that, you know, more divine awareness or just to give you more of that ease or more of that connection with spirit, you know, that we're sometimes people are saying, I don't feel my connection. I don't think I have a connection. Sure you do, right? So to to be, to have that, uh, presence even you know yeah. um and to be can i can i and to be grateful yeah you can definitely you know when you're in that state and when you're feeling that divine awareness and that peace and that bliss you you feel gratitude for sure i recommend that in fact part of my daily sitting is i have a gratitude practice i just take a moment and name at least five things i'm grateful for that day and the problem is stopping. I mean, I could go on 20, 30, 40 things I'm grateful for, and then I could spend the whole sitting doing that, but I just, mm -hmm. kind of, just a few. But, but there's been all this evidence. I mean, one of the most profound spiritual practices you can have is just saying what you're grateful for. Yeah. And so that, that uh, it's great to incorporate that in too. Can I just share how quick and easy it is to maintain embodied awakening using these tools? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Um, so let's start with just that basic embodied awakening invocation because that's the quickest and easiest one. If you just did that first thing, as soon as you thought about it, um, and that's again, just saying to your higher self, maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please, resting and passive breathing. I've had a lot of people come back to me and say, man, I did that a few times and, and now it takes me maybe five or 10 seconds and it's there. No mental chatter, no challenging emotion, peaceful and effortless. Mm -hmm. So with that tool, I just say, do it, fire it up first thing in the morning, and then only repeat if needed. Because if you're in that beautiful flow state, you don't need it because you're already there. But if it slips and all of a sudden, oh, there's mental chatter, there's challenging emotion again, it slipped away, just do the same eight words again, rest in breath, take a few seconds to call it back. And once it's back online, then go about your business. And a lot of people tell me I, they spend maybe a grand total of five or 10 minutes a day to stay in embodied awakening all day using the embodied awakening invocation. So that too, I mean, you can just use that if you want. It is sufficient to get to that level. What I experienced though, and, and you might tell me, Laura, if it's your experience, did you not find that the embodied awakening 
was much more potent and like vast as yeah. you did the sons. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's why it's like, it's like, I don't want to come back. I don't want to open my eyes. I don't want to talk. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. But again, that tool, you know, I recommend that also. And again, like I said, once you get it down, you can do that in a minute or two. And, and that connects you to all the key PowerPoints you need to have a really potent experience of a human being. Mm -hmm. Connected to the cosmic, you know, and grounding things. Mm -hmm. So just do that as you, as you feel called in order to get more grounded or get more connected to the higher realms. And that's a technique you could practice the rest of your life. And it could, you, both of them can just keep going deeper, 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 because there's no limit to any of this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, very, very few humans will hit the finish line, so to speak, with either <laughs> in this lifetime. <laughs> so Carol, I'm not really sure I understand, but she, uh, Carol's asking, can it also be to realize this exercise instead of overeating? So you can do this exercise, which stops you from overeating. Is that your question? I think I see where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, if um, she's probably talking about we overeat not for physical reasons, but for emotional reasons. Mm -hmm. When I, in the past, have overeaten, it's because I felt some kind of emptiness in me, and I was trying to fill it with food, which, of course, is futile, but it's the best you can figure out in the moment, right? So this gives you such a sense of completeness and self-sufficiency, you feel full energetically, and thus the unnecessary eating that was a psychological compensation for not feeling complete would drop away. So I would say, I would, I would say in many cases, having embodied awakening would lessen the desire to overeat because the you've gotten the fulfillment you're looking for in a more helpful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? You guys are quiet today. <laughs> You're a quiet bunch. Yeah, there's like 30 of them. <laughs> they are a quiet group for being so numerous. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah. I'll tell you sometimes when I when I do my awakening plus calls and you know we're done and I call for feedback and you know nothing happens for two, three minutes, I think that's we're done. And then sometimes I'll get emails later saying, Man, you expected me to type? <laughs> exactly. I was so zoned out, man. I could hardly open my mouth and talk, you know. <laughs> I guess I'm used to being able to function in these high states, but for me it's no good. But I, I have to be reminded that for some people it can be so profound that they're just, you know doing anything physical like communicating is just more than they can handle at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. No, I, I, I get it because that, that was quite powerful. Um, both, especially though the two processes together was really powerful. So I, like I said, I had to come back because I had to do the show. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's talk just briefly. Let's go over the, can we go over the, um, the membership again, just really quickly for everybody. Yeah, just a quick recap, I won't go on a length, but basically Awakening Plus, again, is being offered as a freebie for 30 days to try it out. Um, at the end of 30 days, if you wanna join, then that offer will be available to you. Um, again, instead of the usual, I think $199 a year, it's only, I actually, I think, I think it's actually usually 190 a year, if I'm yeah. remembering, but we're not going to down to 99, about half price. Yeah. You could do that immediately if you know you wanna jump in, um, or you could try the 30 days and then commit at that point if you wish. Yeah. Um, either way is open again. Awakening Plus has four basic components. One is the three live calls per month that last one to two hours that will assist you in your healing and awakening practice. There is the archive of over 200 recording events, and that grows obviously by three events every month um, that are just as potent as the day they were done live. You've got a forum where you can interact with other people who are there for the specific purpose of healing and awakening themselves. You know, have that group support, that community, that particular family, and you have an accountability partner you can get if you want, who's gonna, you all can hold each other accountable for your spiritual goals or whatever it is you wanna hold yourselves accountable for. So all that's available. What were the eight words to start? Uh, they were typed two, two lines up. <laughs> Maximum Max embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. Yeah. And you're basically saying that to your higher, to your higher self. Exactly. Yeah. And as I said earlier, there's, let me explain. This is a formula. The formula is maximum fill in the blank that serves highest good, please. So the healing invocation, therefore you just take out the words embodied awakening, plug in the word healing and you do say maximum healing 
that serves highest good for you. So and then you rest in wherever it feels unpleasant and let the divine flush out whatever's going on. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, if, if you can get to embodied awakening before you do the healing version, that's even better. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell a quick story from, um, I've done so many ayahuasca journeys over the years, but I remember one of my early ones where I would just struggle for hours to just clear one big chunk of hucha out of mm -hmm. my system. And then there was another, a few years later, where I was just, just sitting comfortably in my awakening, and I would, I had so many clearings, and the same level of clearing that had taken me hours in, in a prior thing, in one or two minutes, that stuff just fell away like, like a domino ball. So if you, if you are in embodied awakening, the healing goes much quicker, much easier than if you're not. So, I mean, if you can't get there, you know, just do it from wherever you are. But if you can possibly get to a body awakening first and then do the healing. Can I give one bonus way to use the healing invocation too? That's a sure, little absolutely. Um, here's the problem I have sometimes. Like when I work privately with a shamanic healing client, we'll get into a body awakening and I'll say, okay, scan your body, tell me what doesn't feel right. They'll say, it all feels great. <laughs> There's no problem at all right now. I say, darn, I shouldn't have awakened them first. So we're going to have to do a plan B. You, you can actually deliberately call up a painful memory. You know, some of us have memories that every time we think about it, it hurts. Mm -hmm. There's emotional pain. And in this case, you would deliberately, vividly call up one of those painful memories and feel the pain of it. And then say, maximum healing that serves highest good, please. Let the divine flush out that heavy energy. And then once, and the cool thing about the healing invocation, it stops automatically when it's done. Once the heavy stuff is done, the flow just stops, okay? And then to test how effective it was, you call the same painful memory again, exactly like you did the first time. And what usually happens is like, they'll say on the 10 point pain scale, oh God, first time it's like an eight or nine, it hurts so bad, okay? Then you do the flush and then you, you call it again and they'll say, I'm having the exact same memory and there's like no triggering at all. The emotional triggering is zero or very, very small. So that's how you test how effective it was. You bring back the same catalyst again and see what your response is. And usually, uh, most commonly, it's literally a zero if it's just, or it's a very small number that can then be cleared in just a minute or two after that. So um, you can proactively, you can either wait to be triggered uh, or you can proactively trigger yourself deliberately in order to clear things faster. You can go either way with the healing invocation. Yeah, awesome. And, and that's what it's about. It's about, you know, there's no more of, you know, us living through these pains and wounds and et cetera. You know, this is a safe, easy way to clear it, you know, for yourself, for your ancestors, for the collective, for everybody, right? So if, you know, like, why do you want to continue, you know, with the same, same pain, same wound, same hurt, same trigger over and over and over again? Um, it's, it's time to let it go now, especially this year, as Benjamin was saying at the beginning, this is your, the year when all that shadow stuff is going to come up and it's your choice. Well, you have, you know, it's going to come up. So just find a way to clear it, you know, um, and continue to move forward, continue to create, but you'll be able to create better once you do, once you clear some of this stuff, um, yeah. for sure. The two go simultaneously. Can I, can I share one insight that might be helpful for people around that? Mm -hmm. Some people are reluctant to clear their wounds because they're so identified with them, they literally get scared, oh my God, who would I be without that wound? My response is, find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 because, you know, you being with that wound is not working for you, so I wonder who you would be, what you would be like without it. You mm -hmm. know, you won't know until you check it out and, you know, do something different, right? So my answer is you'll probably be a lot happier. Yeah. And if you, if you break out of identity sufficiently, you realize, you know, your identity is not even the human you. You're, you begin to identify primarily as pure peaceful spirit, you know, which has chosen to have a human experience. But when your primary identification becomes your spiritual self, not your human self, that's a game changer. That makes mm -hmm. life so much more wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, and that's the thing is like when you when you do this, you know, embodied awakening more and more and now with the four sons process, you know, you can't help but enjoy it, you know, and as you enjoy it, you're going to do it more. And as you do it more, you're going to experience that more and uh, um, longer for longer periods of time, you know, so yes. why not, you know, try yeah. it. Play with and it. If the tool appeals to you. If it feels resonant for you, then give it a shot and then give it a fair trial. And if it 
you know, what I say is always evaluate the tools in your toolkit. If these tools are the best tools you currently have for healing and awakening, then keep using them until a better tool shows up. Mm-hmm. I'm also not a fan of getting stuck forever on the same tool or path. You know, yeah. I'm my own, you know, like I said, all awakening requires if you're totally into it is everything. And that means you may get to a point where a path has carried you for years has outgrown its usefulness and a better way has opened and your willingness to drop something, even if you've done it for years, even if it's in the mainstay of your identity, it's time to let it go and it's time to let it go. You know, mm-hmm. be willing to go to the next level of, you know, unknown in order to get to the next level because the old you must die for the new you to be born. And I feel like more and more people are starting to do that this year. You know, mm-hmm. they're letting go of the old healing mm, tools that they used to use and mm-hmm. they're starting to let those old ones go and start to embrace something new because the old is no longer working for them so now it's like okay what else is possible out there to heal this clear this etc so that i can have more ease so that i can connect to spirit with more ease and create and live in in, in this life right precisely well said yes yeah, so more and more people are doing that so yay So if this is something that resonates with you, please try it, try it out. And if you'd like to um, do the yearly membership with with Benjamin, you can go to alara.at forward slash show forward slash Benjamin two. And if you want to try it out for a month, go to the gifts page and sign up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean, what have you got to lose? It's, it's It's a free monthly, it's a free membership for a month. You get three live calls, one guest call, all the recordings are already there that are, you know, in, in, in the, in the membership, as well as an accountability partner, if you'd like one. And sometimes we need that to, to really move forward, right. Mm-hmm. As well as the community support. So take a look at both of those things. Take a look at the free gift uh, um, on the gift page and take a look at the special offer, which is available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Benjamin two. Yay. <laughs> and, you know, go back and watch or listen to this again and do the embodied awakening and do the four sense exercise. It was easy. It didn't take very long. And I felt m- much more expanded for sure. Um, so, you know, you can do that as well. So try that too. Okay. Awesome. Any, any last words, Benjamin? Um. Well, first, I just got a whole hit of bliss just a moment ago, so I'm feeling really good. And and the main thing I want to say is gratitude. I am so honored to be able to come on and speak to you and your and your watch and your viewers. And just you know, I'm here to help people wake up. I'm here to help people heal. That's the reason I exist. And to be able to come on your show and and do my mission through this is just a real honor to me. So I'm really grateful to be here, and I, I thank you from my heart. Uh, thank you. And I'm so grateful for the work that you're doing and sharing with us, you know, and it's like, I know this stuff works. We, you just have to use it. You know, it's, it's like all tools, they do work, <laughs> you, but you got to use them. Right. And so yeah. I love what you're sharing. I love that you're learning even more tools, you know, like with the Andean, um, shamanism, etc. learning more and more to share with all of us so that we can have more tools in our toolbox. Um, so that we can clear more of for ourselves, our ancestors, and our and the collective. So that's going to make a huge difference for everybody as we move forward. So mm-hmm. thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you everybody for your questions, comments, and feedback. Thank you for staying with us, being with us, participating in the two processes, whether you were live or watching or listening later. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because that also influenced how we experienced the processes. Right, Benjamin? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And um, so glad to have you back with us, Benjamin, keeping you and your soulmate in our prayers as well, um, for sure. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, everyone, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, radiant health, sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now.